So All right. we put three on. Three hat. No. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> this is for the kids in, at school. Yeah, this is for the kids at yeah. school. Did you hear that? This is for the kids at school. Yeah. Yeah, roll it. Roll it. Okay, so we're coming. We're here today at 155 Sherborne, yeah. and uh, we're we're honored to be in the presence of uh, my friend and collaborator. Uh, this is the mayor of Moss Park, Derek Black. Yes, and we are fighting because we need housing. The government have a lot of houses that not using, and we are marching because we are need housing. We need people to get housing. And that's why we're marching and fighting for this. You want to tell them who I am? Um, this is my co-star co here. This is the, the, the founder and co-owner of the Moss Park Engagement. So <laughs> this is Jack, and he's the man that makes things go on. Yeah, this is my brother here. But I'm, a, I'm an artist, a photographer, um, a person. I feel like... Uh, yeah, I love, I love photography. I feel more like a poet lately, you know? Like, I feel, like, much more in line with, like, poetry than, than like, photography proper. I don't know if that makes sense. But, um, yeah, we're just here. Derek and I have been... Um, Derek and I have made some cool stuff this year together. Um, some cool images. And, uh, I mean, I guess, like, the thing is, like, that's just, like, a sliver of this, like, massive shit that's happened this year but it's definitely like the visible kind of like public side of all that. Um, and so that's why we're here today. We're just kind of, uh, we've been just around each other a lot, eh? So I was really lucky. Um, I was, I was born in Peterborough and uh, both my parents were artists. And so I was really lucky in the sense that like art making, you know, like art as a career, as a, as a form of expression was this thing that was like really nurtured in me from a young age, like much in the same way, like if my parents were like a mechanic, you know what I mean? Like I would grow up around that kind of like, that kind of stuff and it would be like taught to me in this really organic way. Um, so when I was a kid, uh, my dad, who's like a photographer and a painter, taught my brothers how to paint and he just kind of singled me out as a photographer and gave me a camera. And the rest is history. The rest is history, you know, but, <laughs> but, we kind of clashed, right? Because I was like really young and, and messed up. Tools of the trade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, like, like I, I was, I was like skateboarding and like getting messed up and mashed up. And um, I was really into taking like, I really, if I think back, uh, my dad was really trying to teach me a lot about discipline through art. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like, I was like wanting to make like these like, you know, like slow shutter, dragging the flash, like skateboard fisheye photographs. And he was like, no, no, you got to take 50 black and white, you know, portraits on film before you try color film. And so, so again, like he was trying to teach me about discipline and it was just like through art making, through the practice of photography that he was trying to like teach me those lessons because it was what he knew, you know? Um, and then, yeah, like a lot of stuff happened in my life. Um, that like kind of like pulled me out like both of my parents died um i was a drug user that took me to all sorts of wild places um but in like a kind of like wrapped up way of talking about it um like at a young age like the only thing that mattered for me was drugs because it was for me this thing that made me feel okay with who i was um it made me able to survive like some of the stuff i had experienced in life um but it also became but it also was like this great eraser Right. Like it erased all these other things in my life. And then, you know, like my parents dying and all this stuff just kind of mounted up on itself. Um, so I ended up as a young adult coming back to Toronto um, with kind of no idea who I was, newly sober. Um, so I had kind of like that, you know, I was like dealing with like the absence of my parents, you know, the absence of my father, who was like a teacher um, and the absence of like being a drug user. Right. Because I found a lot of um, like beauty in that kind of community in those relationships. And so as this like young person with no idea who I was, like the only thing that I kind of, the thing that I returned to was photography. Um, 
you know, I had suffered like this tremendous loss and, and, and at the time, you know, taking, making photographs was the only way that I could express like these really complicated things, right? Like these complicated spiritual things that had happened in my life. Um, and so, yeah, I, start, I, I was new in Toronto. I was working just down the street at Queen and Church. I worked in Scarborough for a while and then got this job at Queen and Church. You know, Henry's yeah, there. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I was just like walking around taking pictures and, uh, you know, connecting with people in that way. So when I was first kind of like coming many, many years ago, uh, returning to photography as a way to kind of like make sense of my experience, I was operating with a lot of like blind spots around like my own privilege and my own privilege in the act of photographing other people. Um, so I was like, you know, going up to people that I hadn't met and asking them to take their photographs. So there was this like form of consent, but it definitely wasn't um, like that was sometimes the end of it. Right. So it was like, hey, can I take your picture? We make the picture and then I would put it on Tumblr or something like that. Um, and so I was like making those kind of images for a while, but ultimately like I was still like so fucked up and trying to make sense of like all these things that had happened in my own life. And I was using like other people um, and those photographs to try to make sense of my own experience and um, not really recognizing that like I was walking, like walking in these neighborhoods and like able to like enter and exit situations with like a different amount of, of privilege than the people that I was making photographs of. And at the time I didn't really see a problem with that. Cause like I said, I was operating with, a lot of blind spots and and I was naive and like hadn't really been engaged with like any sort of theory or feminism or stuff like that and so I was like hearing these like really basic arguments from photographers being like we have the right to photograph in public space you know like that right to photograph like trumping everything else and that was kind of like what was informing me um and yeah I was like you know a lot of stuff happened you know and and uh the, th the thing was that like photography was like this main link to me being able to not only express, but articulate stuff that I couldn't really articulate in any other way. Um, and over the next kind of like five and six years, um, I was really trying to like speak about um, abandonment and death and loss in this way that because it, the, those were the things that had really like, profoundly shaped who I was as a person. Um, and I started to photograph a lot of people sleeping on the street in uh, the neighborhood that I worked in just down the street from here, sleeping on hot air grates. Um, and I got offered to publish that work. And that was this like really big turning point in, in my life as a photographer, because um, there were some people that were close to me that were like questioning uh, that work, like the ethics behind that work. Like, is it okay to use someone else's body and experience to talk about my own experience? Um, stuff like that and uh it just like i came to this thing that was like yeah this is exploitative for these reasons and decided not to publish the work and that was like this big turning point because i really at that time didn't want to take photographs right like i was like fuck like how am i like I, it just kind of like everything stopped um but it was also one of the most beautiful moments because it really made me um question like what the point is you know what i mean like looking at like photojournalism and documentary photography um, I think I was like operating at that time with some illusion that like the image would bring about change, right? Like that if enough people saw, uh, people sleeping on hot air grates that, uh, you know, something would change for those people, like that the ph photograph was some kind of like evidence of something, you know? Um, and I don't think it is like, I think we're like s surrounded by so much images and a lot of, a lot of people aren't, uh, really ready to like divest fully and like look at what radical change means so that we can all live a lot better. Um, but anyway, so what, what, what I've developed over the past, I guess, eight to 10 years is like a real collaborative uh, practice within photography, right? Like, so anyone I photograph, um, their lived experience is just as important in making the image as my ability to, you know, use a camera and make the image. Um, and so like, most of the people that I photograph are like my close friends and collaborators. And what that looks like in a practical way is that there's enthusiastic and ongoing consent. So if I take a picture of Derek, like I show him the picture right away, ask him if I can post it, show him the post, text him the article, and we split all the money. Right. And so it's really interesting because this way of 
operating in a fully transparent fashion is actually so much fucking easier than trying to dance around the opposite. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so I don't know. I find like there's like a lot of beauty and freedom um, in in this kind of transparency and it feels easy and like there's nothing to defend. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's like the truth between us is the truth. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's why Derek's here today. Like I want to show some images that we've made over the past year um, that kind of like show how we've come to know each other. And there's no, like, like these conversations don't exist without Derek by my side, you know? So a bunch of us early on in the pandemic, about a year ago, um, we responded to a call for people to support a clearing underneath the gardener. They were clearing um, a bunch of tents underneath the gardener. And a lot of us saw for the first time the the brutal and coercive tactics that the city was using to get rid of people that were living in tents during a pandemic. Um, and we were responding uh, at the call of, you know, harm reduction workers and frontline workers, people like Zoe Dodd. Zoe, what's going on here? Uh, we're watching our hearing. We're just trying to get it up here on the screen. Amazing. Um, that are that during the pandemic, we're working these like in, incredibly intense frontline jobs and then also showing up to support folks. Right. And so we formed kind of like organically, like it's, we have this uh, group called ESN and Camden Support Network. And we're mostly like artists and musicians and people like that, that um, recognize that there was this need there was this big gap in terms of what the city was providing. So effectively we um, monitor the city and provide mutual aid and develop relationships with residents and encampments and, uh, and advocate, advocate for change and um, speak out against like the coercive practices, coercive and violent practices of the city. So me and uh, Simone and my friend, John Bush went to Moss Park to meet Zoe Dodd and some other uh, OPS workers. And we were just kind of like starting to talk about uh, what would have, what, what became ESN, like talk about organizing. Um, and that's where I first met Derek. And so there's this image, beautiful image um, of Derek and his partner, Michelle, in their tent. And it's this beautiful blue tarp and Derek standing there. They're incredibly lit. Do you remember the one? Yeah. yeah. And there's these beautiful banners. Um, Called, and it says we are not the are virus. Not, we, yeah, we, we 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 don't have the virus. Yeah, we are not. The we virus. are not the virus. Yeah. yeah, remember that day? And that day went viral. That picture alone, a hundred thousand million million followers that day. You know, people from all walks of life were come to take picture. We even have a picture of um, what's the guy named Luther um, Martin Martin Luther King. Yeah. You know, the police then came and tried to take away my shit and, you know, it was, it was kind of rough time there, but luckily we have Jeff them on our side, you know, and from there, everything was, was just going smoothly because the police them, um, the workers, mm -hmm. the city, everybody was just down on people, you know, you don't have nowhere to go. So this is where we meet Jeff and from there, everything was in a flow, you know. And the, and the thing that's important, right? Cause like I get, I get blown up a lot of the time by other, like, like journalists, you know, people wanting access. Um, and there's like this very like colonial, uh, imperative in, in photojournalism. It's very extractive, right? Like, like a lot of times people are just like coming, will come in for like a moment, right? Like photographers will come into a place, extract an image and then never come back. Right. And uh, yeah, I just don't I don't believe in that. I think that's I think that's really an, an, an awful way to be um, in relationship, you know, and I think it's important to say, like, we met that first. But it's also like the trip of it is like to know me to like authentically know me as someone that always has my camera with me. You know what I mean? So it's like if you know me long enough, we're going to make some cool photographs together, you know. And so that first time. um we, we, we made this beautiful photograph with you yeah. and Michelle. We talked about it. We showed it, you know, went back and showed Derek again. But for the most part, um, especially with the images in Moss Park, like, you know, remember Shaba? Like most yeah, people, most yeah. people didn't know me as a photographer, right? What do they call me? They call it Iceman. Why? Because you're the Iceman. <laughs> this man come and deliver 
he, you know, he associate with you. He, you, he's there. In the time of needs, he was there. You know, any time. Yeah. Eleven o'clock, you wake up. Your ice is there. Your Gatorade is yeah, there. Yeah. Your water is there. It was well prepared. I, I, I like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That moment on, I, I, I put my trust in him. Mm. You know, it's because we never like everybody just come in and just want to hear our story and they're yeah, yeah. gone. Yeah. You know, he was supportive. He was there to thick and thin. He was there from the first time and he's still here. Still here. Let's go. Even even when I move out the park, yeah. he's right. still here, you know? Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff to talk about that have nothing to do with photography, right? So it's like, Derek... You know, like, I want to make this man's, I want this Derek story to, like, be, like, a myth, like, a legend, right? Because this is a single person. This is, like, a fucking big person because this Derek fought against the city of Toronto, right? The corporation of the city of Toronto. He fought against police, park ambassadors, all these people, and he stayed strong, and he demanded housing. Right, this is this beautiful thing that's happened. Right, this is a whole other story, and we can send a link in this video. <laughs> we can send a link to the full story in his own words. Yeah, man. Okay, we're gonna give you that. But the point is, is that what we saw early on last year is we saw the the city. So, okay, so it's like me as a white person. If I jaywalk, I get a I get a a ticket for jaywalking. Right, it's a bylaw offense. I get a ticket. I pay the ticket. Right, you go in these parks that's mostly black men and indigenous people and those same bylaws are used to literally destroy people's lives the bylaws are the excuse to destroy someone's yeah. property to yeah. steal their stuff yeah definitely you yeah. know true and I'll and put so put it the, in their pocket and put it in I their pocket see with my two eyes they're taking my stuff and yeah. and so this is what we see happen all the time right so there was this and 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 derek's so beautiful because derek derek sued the city of Toronto, right? So not just in Moss Park, Derek suing the city stopped for a moment, for a long stretch of months, stopped the city from evicting people in encampments. It was a very profound point in time in the last year. You get the right? link of that too. We'll, we'll send you the link for that. Well, we lost the case, right? So there was this day in Moss Park, we had everyone there. We had a projection screen that was part of Derek's tent. Yeah, yeah. You know, we had our lawyer, Seema, who's awesome. Everyone was there and it was it was an exciting day, you know? And what was really cool about, I know I'm rambling and getting off topic, but what was cool about, <laughs> what was cool about that day was that um, I went into it thinking that I wouldn't understand the legal jargon, Yeah. right? But man, but, but then the judge and the crown are like talking about stuff and we're like, no. No, that's not true. You know what I mean? And you can get portable water. They can, they can, they can do that. Fuck, uh, do they, they do can... that in an overcrowded park? Um, it's not overcrowded. Oh, this is the judge oh, saying an overcrowded oh, park. That's all he's talking about. Look at this. Look at this. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think what's your honor. It was really, really interesting time. Um, but we lost the case based on Di uh, on lies right the truth was distorted right the judge made a ruling based on the city having a robust shelter system that was based right. on distorted numbers so it was a mess anyways so backtrack to the eviction so what was happening was park ambassadors were coming in like police and they were slapping 24 hours sometimes less but 24 hour eviction notices that looked like a ticket on people's tents they weren't engaging with them they're basically like, you have to leave within 24 hours or we're clearing your stuff and bringing the police. And this is what Derek stood up and fought against. And so what happened was a slightly more compassionate eviction process, but it was still bullshit, right? So then the city would come with streets to homes and they would offer people spots in temporary shelter hotels as a way to fast track, you know, housing Ooh, stuff like this. All, it's all, people. it's not, it does, well, and what we've seen is that it, it works for some, but it doesn't work for a lot of people for a range of reasons. Right. And so what we were doing as um, the kind of outreach work was making sure that people were making informed decisions about um, what it would look like to go into a temporary shelter hotel. And so anyways, these were just intense. The, the point, the, the picture I'm trying to paint is this very intense moment of organizing and collaboration that had nothing to do with art or photography or career or whatever. Right. And so the funny thing was, is that Many people knew me as Iceman, right? Yeah. And then they didn't know my camera was in my backpack. 
So we go one day and Jonas, this guy Shaggy was getting moved. He was my good friend. And we've been talking about a portrait. So we made this incredible portrait of him. He's like in his tent reading a book. It's just beautiful, right? And so when on this day of the clearing, Shaggy was like telling all his friends about the portrait. And he's like, I got to get a picture with you and Zoe, blah, blah, blah. So we, we, it was chaotic, but I was like, okay, okay. So we set up this portrait and I just literally hand my camera to someone, tell someone else to hold the flash. I'm like, go here, go here, go here. Then we make this photograph. And then it was really funny because like all these people that knew me, they look at the picture and they're like, holy, right? And so everyone freaks out because it's a beautiful photograph, right? Because I'm kind of like manipulating the light and shit like that. And so, um, and then it just turned into this like wild scattered photo shoot. And the backdrop was this like city clearing, right? It was really quite beautiful. Um, and so from that day on, the word kind of spread. There was yeah. uh, our good friend, who's Tony? Tony Global, our good friend. What yeah, do you call him? yeah. Tony Global. So Tony, Tony one time, Shabba. Shabba is amazing. <laughs> Shabba is just awesome, right? And so we had talked, I don't know, something had happened where he kept asking me for a photograph, but it was always kind of chaotic. And then boom, we just make this one really quick. And I'm going to show you right here, right here. Okay. So then we make the photograph and then there was this, okay, so Derek had this really big house, like huge house in the park yeah. by the tennis courts, by the light. They call it big yard. They call it big <laughs> yard, right? And then next to him was this was this place called Trench Town, and it was this kind of like open yeah. place with a barbecue, a lot of parties going on, right? So anyway, so so I photographed Shaba kind of like on the side of Derek's house by Trench Town, and then like everyone sees the photograph and, and flips out, and then everyone wants the boss man, all these people want photographs in that moment. So that was really fun. That was really like a beautiful, um, yeah, it was just like, it was just like a nice exchange, you know? And then, and still like that process of being like, can I post this on my Instagram? Can we use this on ESN's Instagram? Like that wasn't, it wasn't just like the, the consent was the enthusiastic consent was obviously there in the act of collaborating to make the image. But, but I think it's important um, for me as someone that gets to leave the park, right. To be like, Hey, this is what I'm doing with the image. You know what I mean? Like people are going to see it. Is this okay? Stuff like that. For me as a photo photographer, right? Yeah. And our collaboration, what's that been like for you? Very good, because I've been publicized. I can't go nowhere without people know me. I'm telling you, everywhere I go, people know me as the guy from Mass Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that time it was in the, in, in the, in the hot crisis where everything was just flowing. The part was nice, you know, and and after he take that that first, we take that picture that first, and he showed oh, me the image this, and this, remember? Yeah. Would you, uh... And I say I like it. It's like, you know, and then we do a couple more, you know, and then we go, and then tomorrow you come and show me, and and from that it was nice, man. I yeah. wouldn't want nobody to take my picture, you know, because we have a lot of camera people come to take my picture and you know, I tell him no. You know, if if Jeff is not the one that taking my picture, no go. Even 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 CP say um uh, CP twenty four came, um Global came, City News, every, everyone everybody. Come. You know, and they want to take my picture but I turn him down, you know. Gotta go through my mind here first. I think there's also something to be said. Yeah, that, yeah I go through it. You yeah. know? It's not that I don't trust him, but like I said, everything goes through him. You know? It goes through him to me. So it's vice versa. He, you know, if something wanna happen, he gonna explain it to me first. If, and then I, I tell him yes or no, whether I want to, but it's the same thing. Right. You know, so if somebody want to talk to Jeff or ask Jeff something about me, I also ask yeah. Jeff first and make Jeff know that somebody want You know, so it's vice versa. I checked for this man, and this man was my comforter, you know? Mm. He's a man that, that I didn't, I didn't scare to give him anything or say anything about what other people. I didn't trust them, you know, because they just come and take your thing and gone. You know, it was just words and promise and mm. promise and, mm. you know, but pr faithful promise make fool glad. Oh, you know, one more saying? time. Faithful promise make fool glad because it's a faithful promise 
So it come quick, so you just take it. It make you glad. You know, that's why you see, I want to, I want, if it's not signed, I didn't want to do with it, you know, because they promised me so many times. Yeah. And because they promised me, it was faithful, so we are the right. fool. Yeah? And i glad for that. It's like giving away, it's like giving away, I want to say, you know, um, how do I say that? Surety for unsurety, mm. you know? It's like giving away certain for uncertain because it's a everything. So what I have, I certain I have it, you know, to give somebody what I have for promise. You understand what I'm saying? So if what I have is certain, what you're going to promise me is uncertain. Right. Because I don't have it yet. So it's unpromised. It's uncertain. So it's faithful promise, you know. So this man, you know, I trust him and. I know it was certain. Hey, you know, even, 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 um, what's this mayor name? Um, not, um, Adam Vaughn. When Adam Vaughn came remember, to the park, remember? he come and meet me and shake my hand because he here, I'm the one who sued the city. He promised me. Yeah. Not only me, he promised all of us in the park, you know, that he will return and, oh no. That's what I'm saying. It's faithful promise, you know. <laughs> so it make our make we glad. You understand? But they never return. Mm. You know, so sometimes we just have to just take our time and demand and determine and say, this is what I want. And if I'm not want if I'm not getting it, I'm not doing it. Mm. You understand? So I did decide from the very first time I meet these guys and I'm going to park, I'm not moving. Mm. I'm not moving from the park because I'm tired of the words and I'm tired of the talking. You understand? This is what I want. I'm not moving from here to a hotel and I'm not moving from the hotel, from, from the park to a hotel. I'm moving from the park straight in my apartment. And this is what I'm at. I'm, I'm in my apartment here, buddy. Yeah. This is one month now. One month. Massive. I, I, I get this one bedroom. Because I determined and stood fast and said, I'm not moving until I get my place. It done. Yeah, so I happy this come out of the park, my hard work. After about 35 years of applying for Ontario housing, it takes this for me to get it in, in less than a year. Mm. We were just talking, what, what, just what we, remember we were talking before that we were rolling? Yeah. But our friendship, this is such a little time. Yeah. Imagine if it was. <laughs> just well, imagine. Was, uh, if it was a couple of years. It imagine. Flu, you know, you know, all over. It still is. Yeah, man, remember. This man here for a little time, we get so big. Mm -hmm. The amount of things that we go through already, you know, it, it will be crazy. I think that the biggest problem is that we have all these ingrained stereotypes of, of certain kind of people. If we look at like drug users or, or unhoused people, right? Like there's this like kind of like peripheral idea that we have, like what someone's supposed to look like, you know what I mean? And I think that a lot of times the, there's like this editorial imperative to like show something a certain way. And this is like a really like um, big responsibility of, of photographers and new photographers to not continue to like replicate those same uh, stereotypes and biases that are like so connected to the violence that people experience on a daily basis, right? Like we, and we have to start like looking outside of those, like the way that we like symbolize and box in people to look a certain way. I think that, I think of this conversation so often where a, a journalist, like a very, there's a cat running around behind Eula right now. Um, just like there was this journalist that had called me about how to ethically photograph drug users for a piece. I think it was the Globe and Mail or something like that. And it was like, so I think like we have to start talking about changing and looking at the processes, like the extractive processes of journalism and stuff like that. But I think it's also important to look at like, like I say this all the time, like, you know what I mean? Like I would never photograph anyone 
I fo- try to photograph people the same way I'd photograph like my grandmother or a lover. You know what I mean? Like I'm never going to take a picture of someone where their like eyes are like half open. Right. And they look, you know, and, that, and like, like if I were to take a photograph and then be embarrassed or weird about showing the person that photograph that was going to get published in like a newspaper, like that's a good sign not to use that photograph. You know what I'm saying? And this and it's, it's really interesting because it all seems like basic stuff. Well, so for me, that's the great free- freedom I find as as an artist, right? As someone that's working outside of those editorial imperatives of photojournalism, right? Like I'm not um, being asked to go anywhere and, you know, like capture like a specific thing that an editor wants to like represent something, you know what I mean? And I think that like with Derek or with my other friends, like the relationship is the thing that comes first, right? Like, and for me, like, I don't even photograph people well if I don't know them, right? There's something like awkward about that exchange anyways. So I think like for me, the best photographs come through trust and things like trust and and love are like things that are in action and have to be like proven over a long period of time. Um, And those things come easy. And that's like in in direct conflict with what it means to be like a photojournalist right now, right? And I think that's what makes it hard. I don't know if those processes are possible to be non-extractive processes unless people are getting paid a lot of money for their image you know unless like and and a lot of times like these newspapers and magazines even will be like we can't pay people because it's like it's it's not ethical and and i just call bullshit on that like we pay models get paid you know what i mean like the the, i I feel like if 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 a photographer or a news agency is going to come into a place like a park uh, where people are living with next to nothing and, tr- and take the images so that the newspaper or, t- or magazine or whatever TV show can make money, then like we got to look at the money. We got to look at the money, right? And there's something that's like completely unethical and 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 brutal about that, right? To be like, no, nah, like we need we need this for news, and it's it's we have to be unbiased about it because everything is operating with some sort of bias. What do you think, D? Do you have yeah, advice for young photographers? Yeah. You know, just go there and try your thing. If you, because if you're young, you got to get a break somewhere. You know, you got to get a start somewhere, you know. So you got to pay to learn anyway. You got to pay because everything in life is a cost. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Can I ask you a real question now? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, you know, the ice and all that stuff, the ESN stuff. Right? Yeah. Which was more important in affecting change, right, over the last year, everything that's happened? Which was the thing that affected change? The action, the showing up every day, or the quick image leave? Yo, it was, Yo, say it. It, it, to, it was the action. Because action speak louder than word. You know? The people just talk things and, and say things, but action speak louder than word. And action with this man, it was action. Because if he said 11 o'clock, it's 11 o'clock. 10 to. You know, or 10 to. You know, we, 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 you know, if, if, if Jamaican, if he said, because a lot of times he checked me on 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I say, oh, just put it there. I'm, 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 I'm up. But I'm not up. But he, no, he, he was punctual. He was a good man. And he's still a good man. So one of the things, one of the great, I think, joys yeah. of the park is we would uh, there, give, give them the hot call. <laughs> Anytime you hear that. So there's these at least two big hawks that circle these buildings in the park, right? And uh, that Derek would call them and we could see, we could see if we look east, there would just be like all these pigeons clearing. Yeah, and we know the hawk would just be swooping yeah, down a road, you know. Um, and so there's this beautiful photograph of Derek bird watching. Remember the one? Yeah, I said the sun. What did I say? I said the light. What? Remember by the tree? I don't know. I said get up by the by the light. Yeah, by the light, and then a, a hawk come around, and yeah, I just so we got we snap it. So I'm gonna see. I'm gonna find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So find it. So. So this is a gift I gave Derek for Christmas. Yeah, but somebody, they, 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 they vandalize it. Yeah. 
So we're gonna redo this because it was in a ring. That's the hot. That's yeah. It coming. It was so low. So every day we come and 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 take our picture. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You can yeah, see the details of the, yeah. the feathers and everything in the wings. Yeah, the eyes. And, you know. This one is this one is the is the one with with with, with, with Luta. Where are we? So say where are this we? This is my house. Mm -hmm. This is my front house. This is the front of my house here. This is my house. Mm -hmm. I can explain more if you wanna you wanna carry more on. No, you go. Yeah, this is this is where everything. This is my my fiance Michelle. He's still here, she's in the bedroom. This is my little dreaming, house. Dreaming right yeah, this is my little house. And this is the big house. Mm. So we're moving up. Okay. Who's the and this is Tony Global. Yeah. The which famous is the ambassador and president of our thing, <laughs> which in real it are rolling at the back of the see that's the tenth down there. And this is African. You know, this is this is all my house. This is all my my dwelling. Everybody come right here at the big house at the mere place to get everything. <laughs> Who's that? I say, that's me. Who's that? And this one, we have some beautiful time, you know? Oh, yeah, here's you know, Jeff have all these. Look at this. This is, this is, this is snow. This is, um, slice. Slice. And I could even tell you who that one is. No, we don't know that. And, and this is me here. Yeah. You see? I know. So that's the same shit. You don't want to represent one. Who, who is this t thing on it here? Yeah. That was, a, that was an important uh, day. This was when we just get in all these houses and people were setting up their houses. From Khalil. See these little houses Khalil. here. Khalil. Yeah, I don't want to call them. Here. But you see these little houses? Oh, you can. You know, it, it, it was beneficial to a lot of people. And safe, but it's the same as as a big house. People can set it a fire, and it's the same thing happen. So this one house here is a beautiful house where even the lawyer and the mayor would love to have one. You know, we turn them down. This was my house in in the winter here, mm. where I was snowing and and mashed down by the winter. You know, and this it's all my house here. I could even come out. I have to peep out. This is my house. You see? Yeah, and I stood fast in all these kind of things. I stood fast. Look at it. Who's that? My body AK. You know, this is this is the image of your house. That what that's what we have, but it was warm, you see? Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of a lot of ups lot. and down and and, and and beautiful and yeah, yeah, yeah. things and and this look at this. This is when I'm, I get my house. This is right here, you know. The same day that I'm, the week that I move in, we cry because it was so beautiful. Yeah. This is, this is the day. Very important day. Very important day of life, boss. Look. See? This, bring it. This is it. The video? Yeah. This okay, is we'll it. show you the video. Taking you. Taking this man my first day, see, from out in the cold, mm. right into the warmness. <laughs> so that's that's where we are from. We start that's where we are until we, this is where we are now. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful journal. If you even if you can, can sit down and, and sum it up and write it up, it's a beautiful thing. You know to see that. What we, we we go through and and where we we are coming from to here, it's exciting, you know. And I'm happy and and I, and I'm still happy for more beautiful things to come. Mm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So this is it. <laughs>